Hello everyone, welcome to another episode of Experience Kills. It's the new guy here, Rob speaking to you. I'm here this evening with lovely Ben. Hello Rob, how scared are you? A little bit, this is my first video review ever. This evening I'm talking about the wonderful game Iron Harvest. It's made by the developers King Art Games with Deep Silver. So the game is out on Windows at the moment. It is coming to the PlayStation 4 and the Xbox One uh, series of consoles in a while. There's a bit of an uncertainty on dates, I believe, at the moment, but it is winging its way to us. So essentially, it is a real-time strategy game. I am a massive fan of real-time strategy or RTS games. It's a diesel punk style mecha game, which means you're making armies of people and mechs, and then trying to beat other people round the face with said mechs. Sounds good. I mean, I'm gonna full disclosure on this. Uh, when I saw this game, I really wanted to play it, and then I found out the specs, and I was like, wow, I could probably play it, but it would look like poo, and for the sake of a quality video review, I actually was told the guys that gave us the code, um, no, because it's just like, no, I can't do it. But then thankfully Rob joined us, and I was like, ah, oh, do you know what, Rob, you're going to get to enjoy this. And like you, I am a huge fan of RTS. It's kind of what got me into gaming when I was a youngster on, on a PC. That's kind of how I found my way to gaming was RTS. It's the idea of being an armchair general and sending the men to die at the hands of, in this case, horrible mechanized infantry. Um, yeah, so I'm really jealous. Is it as cool as it looks? Oh, mm, cooler, really. It is amazing. I'll get more into the aesthetic in a bit, but it is beautiful. It's exactly how you want to be that armchair general, sending mechanised platoons into battle and doing everything from shooting them with regular boring bullets to deploying explosive unicycles to go and blow up the base. That That's not me exaggerating or making it up. There, there is that as one of the endgame units, which blew my mind a little bit uh, the other day when I was playing through. I have no words. Mil yeah. mil Militarised unicyclists. Uh, it's a bomb strapped to a giant wheel that oh, deploys from a fortress you know what? that wanders around. Everyone knows the worst thing about a unicyclist is the person on it. So that the fact <laughs> it's having it just as a bomb, that's even better. Like then you haven't got to look at the twat like trying to impress you with his balance. So win. That is Love a very it. good point. <laughs> so this game is dear to me for more than just the fact it's an RTS. It's based on the wildly popular board game franchise, Scythe set in the same universe, uses the same aesthetic, uses the same mechs and the same kind of concepts as well. So Scythe is a 1-5 to five player board game. People say you can play games of it in um, an hour or so, they're wrong. It is a <laughs> absolutely magnificent game. I am going to wax lyrical about that just for a minute or two. Um, just the base game itself is phenomenal. You're playing through an alt version of 1920s Europe where technology advanced just in a lateral direction. Mechs are commonplace, they're everywhere. You have Tesla type guns, Tesla coil type guns. So each of the factions that you come across in the board game are themed around slightly different versions of current European countries. So you have uh, the Tagawan Shogunate, I believe that's how it's pronounced, I'm going off memory here, I should have written this down, that's based on Japanese explorers who have come over to try and stake their claim. You have the nation of Polania, which as you can get from the name sounds very similar to Poland. Uh, you have like the Saxony Empire, Rusviets being Russians, and all sorts. It is a magnificent game which at some point I will force Ben to play with me. I want, I've always wanted to play it. I've always wanted to play it. It looks so goddamn cool. I know I'd enjoy it. I've just never found that way into board games. Like, so that, that, uh, yes, happy to be forced to play side. Well, excellent. Live stream that and uh, you'll all be really bored. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a thing. Is that something people do? Do they live stream board games? I'm sure they must do. I believe there are one or two channels out there that do do that. I'm sure it's a thing. Um, but yeah, there, there is a computer version of the board game, which I will probably have some footage up in the background of me talking about this. But now, back to the reason we are here, back to Iron Harvest. So, I think the art style 
certainly for the loading screens and even in the game itself, harkens back to its roots. It shares the same artist who I believe is a man, I'm going to ruin this pronunciation, I apologise profusely if he ever sees this, uh, Jakub Rozowski, I believe. Um, his skill is out of this world, the way he's done some of the concept art and loading screen art for both of these games. That His vision, absolutely astounding. I think that's something you can definitely agree with me on. Yeah, he's always brought, like, from, from the, the stuff I've seen, he always brings, like, this um, almost like a watercolour aesthetic like a, a heavy brushwork look to these uh, very austere looking mechanized units but he brings it, it then for makes them beautiful he has a way of framing uh, this you know horrible hulking behemoths in a way that you know is also with nature and is also with the the natural surroundings and it, and it just creates these incredibly evocative um, tableaus that really draw you in to the world and that's what has always made me want to play side you know purely that box art uh, on those those ginormous side boxes is what pulled me in and this is the same thing with the concept art that I've seen for Iron Harvest and I I really wanted to play this game so all right get get into this game man I need to know like what's my build orders I need to know like how am I rushing am I turtling are there other other missions like really structured around a story do I have skirmish modes is there good multiplayer I need it all give it to me so first of all my f primary first stop in pretty much any RTS game is to play around on skirmish mode which probably is not the best idea because you don't get introduced to the mechanics that way but I did the first match on here in skirmish mode and yeah, there's a bit of hunting around for things I think going through the campaign first is a better experience it's a very story focused campaign but skirmish mode works beautifully and um, that unfortunately there is one negative point about Iron Harvest that I'm going to bring up first to get it out the way. Okay, okay. Unconventional, but I like it. Go for it, Rob. The combat isn't the deepest in the world. Okay, that seems like a big problem for an RTS. I'm not going to lie. I'm but not going to lie. the combat is fun. It makes up for it. You may not have 20 different variants of infantry that you can go for, but each individual unit of infantry, there are about four or five per faction, is unique. They may share across factions similar themes. There's an anti-infantry, an anti-vehicle, slash anti-mech one. The, one of the factions has a flamethrower ground infantry unit, for example. You know, it, they're slightly different, slightly tweaked to go with uh, their styles. When you compare it to something like Command and Conquer or the Total War games, real high-tier mega RTS titans, the combat's not quite as deep. Question, so you sort of mentioned it. Is it is it the is the combat um, mechanics are they based around kind of the triangle? As as in, you know, you've got your infantry that's strong against X but weak against Y, and then you've got your mechs that are strong against X but weak against Y, and then you've got your vehicles that are strong against X and weak against Y. So they they that that basically quite simplistic yeah. um is you know, we'll call it an RTS mainstay. It's often how you mm. know that kind of those mechanics are work. You know, come about because you go back to like you know realistic RTSs where it's like a pikeman will be strong against cavalry because you know he's got a long stick so he can get the dude on the back of the horse. But it kind of comes back to that that concept like the in the same thing. I always remember chariots were good against archers and stuff because they were quick and could get inside the range of the archers. So you have this fairly simple. But what makes it fun is the first of all the balance. You don't have to have huge hmm. amounts of variety in your unit selection as long as the balance feels good and that you yeah. know there's the, the visual aesthetics are enough to pull you in and engage you um so that's the question really it doesn't have to be super complicated like you know you're talking about some of the latter total war games that have hundreds of different unit types because you know they're trying to reflect history in that regard the, if the balance is there uh, and the structure is there you're still it's still fun is what you're saying yeah exactly that the triangle is a very good uh, metaphor. It has guns and mechs that are better against infantry as opposed to worse against some other mechs. So you would deploy one specific mech to deal with a little swarm of infantry that has come your way. You would then deploy a bigger mech that would be more effective at dealing with buildings. There's one particular mech that has massive claws. It has no ranged weaponry at all. It's a building killer. So it's designed to be escorted to the enemy base and to just chop up their buildings. 
So that's when you protect it with side units that would then complement it. So there's, there's complexity, but there's not complexity, which makes it very accessible, which is cool. the, the redeeming factor in that. I'm sure as time goes on, because in the universe there are, I believe, nine different factions, this game represents three. So I'm sure in time it will get expanded. I very much hope we get a sequel and more things come out. So I have done a bit of the campaign. Uh, the campaign is very story driven. It follows three of the different nations. You have Polania, Rusviet and Saxony. Um, and you follow different characters within. It focuses on hero characters. So the first hero character you come across is a girl by the name of Anna Koz, a Polanyan uh, I think it's when you first encounter a schoolgirl and she grows up and she has a pet bear, as you do. She's a sniper with a pet bear. I'd like a pet bear, uh, I must say. I mean, if it's well behaved when you need it to be, you know, and then, you know, as, as a sniper, good to have that, you know, close protection. Exactly. Um, considering you're a range unit, that's quite handy. So she has abilities, so her bear will go and attack things, obviously, but when you're out of combat, the bear will provide passive healing to Anna and her infantry units that surround her, because it's carrying medicinal supplies and little saddlebags oh. on it. Oh, oh, oh. I was going to say, bear's not known for their healing abilities, but uh, now this that one they're is. Carry, carrying <laughs> pouches, uh, cool, okay, yes. random, love it's it. It's very much her, her pet. Um, as the campaign progresses, you come across her uncle Lech, I believe his name is. Lech. 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 Yes. Right, that's an unfortunate name for anyone's uncle, Indeed. especially someone you described as a schoolgirl. She may be a schoolgirl when you first meet her, but when you're actually playing as her, she is older. Time has passed, as things are easy to do in games. So it's a good grounding device for her character. Um, uncle Lech, he's brilliant because he has a mech that walks on the ground like a gorilla and goes and melees things in the face for you, which is wonderfully fun. Um, so these hero units, I believe each faction has three. As time goes on, you come across them further in the campaign and they add another dimension into the combat because a well-placed hero unit, as we all know from other RTSs, can really turn the tide and this is absolutely mm -hmm. no exception. I like that. I'm glad that there is a little extra flavour Yes. in there a little bit a little little extra element that there are heroes in there which play a part in the campaign do they do they show up in skirmish and multiplayer as well yes they do uh, you can recruit them um they take part of i think it's the reserve forces that you can pull in in skirmish mode to upgrade like your army size um as far as obviously the base building dynamics is concerned it's not a case of building a mine and it sits there and spits out however much. You need to go into the territory to claim iron and oil. They're the two resources that are available to build things with, which is nice. Because you only have two, there are only two you ever need to worry about and micromanage. And because you can't natively build the structures that harvest these resources for you, I think you get a bit of passive income from your HQ base. Because you can't build refinery structures for these it means you have to go out it makes turtling a little harder but i am a hardcore turtler at heart so i made it work it encourages you to go out in the map that doesn't mean you have to move your army around in a blob a couple of different infantry units you know just keeping an eye on the various different uh, refinery structures dotted around can help the ai is reasonably robust the first skirmish i played on medium difficulty I curb stomped completely into the ground. Uh, the second one curb stomped me. So but it's it's challenging. I am an RTS player who doesn't tend to go for the higher difficulties. I don't go for the legendary difficulties and all of that because I, I want it to be fun, not a, a brain box challenge, you know? Oh, I appreciate that. I'm the same. Yep. One thing about the terrain on the map especially with regards to the mechs is one of my favourite additions for this game is that the terrain is reasonably destructible. So if you have a broken down building, uh, maybe a warehouse or something or an old house that is beaten up and you command your mech to what you think would be walk around the structure, sometimes he'll just walk through it and the building will decay and break down and that damage will persist on the map. 
which mm. is just a, a brilliant little touch to see because that's exactly what the mech would do. If this was real alt Europe, that's exactly what the mech would do. Yeah, now I understand why the specifications of this game are pretty high. Okay. Yes. That would explain that. Um, that does sound like a cool touch, though. Yeah, really, really cool. Yeah. Like, just helps you feel like you're, you know, really in the environment and and interacting mm -hmm. with it. And, and, you know, you're dealing with things of scale and heft and weight that, yes. you know, will leave their permanent mark. Um, and I think that, yeah, that, that I can see that adding a lot to the experience. Yeah, very cool. Awesome, man. That sounds really cool. Have you got anything else? Any other little uh, tip bits or anything like that before we wrap this one up? The only tip I would say is if you haven't downloaded this game, download it. What are you waiting for? Uh, perhaps watch this video, watch the footage again whilst the game is downloading, and then enjoy yourself in the world of Iron Harvest. What about you, Ben? Anything further to add? That's emphatic, mate. I don't know if I can I can add anything to that that recommendation there. That's uh, yeah. There's no there's no equivocation in that. You that is that is a hundred percent buy it from Rob. Yeah, damn, damn. How do you feel about the price of it? I mean, uh, obviously we were we were fortunate to be provided a code for this, but it's it's high. Do you think that you know there, there's the story in there? There's the skirmishes. You know, it's a premium price title because it sounds like it's got a premium amount of work that's gone into it. Is that is that fair? Yes, I, I would say that's fair. That, as you say, that is at the premium end of a strategy game, certainly. It reminds me of the kind of price level you would expect from something like Civs um, or Civilizations, to give it its proper term, but I think it's worth it. On the base level, I think the majority of what you're paying for is the art. I mean, even in the cutscenes that you get throughout the game, it still harkens back to that artwork by Jacob and his phenomenal skill. What may sound like a criticism is that the character models don't necessarily look the realest they could be but in my mind that makes it look like the board game has come alive like it's that world that is developing which just makes it more immersive for me that sounds cool that's a stylistic choice you know yeah. that's not that's not a, a limitation of the engine or anything that's exactly. that's a choice you know so you, you can only respect that um so who, who was the developer again did you say it was king art I believe so. Yes, it was King Art Games and Deep Silver working in collaboration, the developers and the publishers. Yeah, no, King Art Games, uh, they really seem to have knocked it out of the park with this one, so well done to them. But no, thank you, thank you, Rob, for coming on and, and uh, taking this game off of my hands. And because uh, I need to build a better PC, god damn it! Uh, but yeah, it sounds incredible, and I know I'd love it if I could run it. Um, so yeah, very, very jealous, but yeah, huge recommendation from there. So that brings us to the end of uh, Rob's first ever video review here on Experience Kills. It's been a pleasure and uh, he'll be back for many more, I suspect. And uh, <laughs> check out uh, the YouTube channel. Please give us a like and subscribe. We really do appreciate that. It goes a long way. You don't notice there's no ads on our videos. I don't have a Patreon to pimp pimp. We just do this because we love video games and that's the only reason we do this, to, to, to play them and to talk about them with you guys. And if you don't have time to sit and enjoy the video, which I do definitely recommend, you can check out the podcast version of these on iTunes and Spotify and anywhere a good podcast can be found we also have the raw rss link as well if you just want to pop it in your podcatcher uh, but yeah do that follow me at diye follow us at experience kills rob isn't on the socials so until next time we'll be back with much more videos very soon